for 2022, the Infiniti QX80 has even more technology packed inside this flagship SUV. Trim levels offered for 2022 include a Lux, a Premium Select, and a Sensory. All those are offered in both rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. What we're driving is the Sensory all wheel drive. It's basically the top of the line, so let's jump into it. So like I said, the biggest updates for the 2022 is the technology inside. The exterior carries over from the previous year, which gives the QX80 bold proportions and commanding exterior detail, such as the 22-inch alloy wheels we have here with chrome dark accents. We have chrome mirror caps on the sensory, that big, bold chrome grill, nice LED headlights, chrome roof rack, LED taillights. And it wasn't too long ago that I was criticizing the QX80 for looking like an elephant in a bikini, but this last go around of styling updates has definitely made it a more appealing exterior. And when you're talking about size, this thing has a wheelbase of 121.1 inches, a full length of 210 0.2 inches width of 79.9 inches height of 75.8 inches and a total curb weight of 5,813 pounds for this four wheel sensory. It is a large SUV around the back here. You do get an automatic popping hatch height adjustable, of course. And while it's not the largest cargo area for a large SUV. It has a decent amount of space. With that third row all the way up, you're looking at 16.6 .6 cubic feet of cargo volume. Fold that third row down and you get 49.6 cubic feet. Fold the third and second row down, you're talking about 95.1 cubic feet. So depending on how many people you need to haul on this thing, you definitely have a lot of room or kind of minimal room. But to get any more room than this, you're talking to something like the Suburban or Yukon Denali XL or even the Cadillac Escalade. But for this size of vehicle, not being an American vehicle, it's about standard. You also do get power folding seats back here. So with the touch of a button, they will fold up and down on their own. which is a great luxury touch. All right, with that, let's go ahead and pop the hood, check out what is powering this big beast. So under the hood is what we'll call the tried and true 5.6 liter V8 engine. This thing has been around for a while. It does make 400 horsepower and 413 foot pounds of torque paired up to a seven speed automatic transmission. And like I said, can be rear wheel drive or four wheel drive. This one is the four wheel drive option. But while it is an old tried and true V8 engine under the hood, it is one of the few big SUVs you can still get with a V8. So nice check mark there. But enough with the exterior, let's go ahead and jump inside, take a look at the interior, see what's changed, where all the actual change has happened. And then we'll take it for a drive. And we'll start wrapping up the video there. All right, here in the second row seating, it's pretty easy to get into those rear seats. There's a little handle back here that you can pull. It will drop and tumble the seat, and then it is pretty easy to get into those rear seats. Nice wide opening for sure. Well, the third row is not ideal for a 6'1 full-size adult. I can fit back here pretty well. So in a pinch, if you really need to fit adults back here, it's okay. But of course, the kids back here, no problems. And obviously no problems in the mid row. Let's jump up there. And these seats, and these seats don't go back and forth, but you can uh, lean them back a bit to give you a little bit more of an angle. But we have plenty of 
knee room, foot room, head room here in the second row. Again, 6'1 adult. We've got a nice console in this one with a huge cubby right here, cup holders right here, access to the front console with a push of a button here. We've got our own heated seats, USB chargers, more chargers at the bottom, and your own AC and heat controls. And then of course, two eight inch screens back here that can tilt a bit. You can put your own media in here. You can hook up HDMI to them. You can hook up your own uh, headphones. You do have wireless headphones also that come with it. So nice luxury touch for some media center back here for the rear seats. And obviously you're not skimping on any kind of luxury back here. You do have really nice materials. You get nice captain's chairs with the same leather as the seats in the front. And it's a good place to be, but let's go ahead and jump into the driver's seat. Check out the rest of the interior, then we'll take it for a drive. So inside this sensory, we do have quilted semi aniline leather appointed seating. Very nice color, very nice contrast. The quilted leather gives a really luxurious feel to not just these front seats, but again, those rear seats as well. And while I might still have a little bit of gripes with this interior for a flagship luxury vehicle, it has definitely improved over the years and is super nice. Let me go ahead and give you a quick tour around. And let's start off by turning it on with the push button start. And as you might be able to tell, this has been significantly redesigned with the all new 12.3 inch Infinity in touch display. It's a nice widescreen display up here. In the previous generation, we did have the dual screens. There were two smaller screens stacked on top of each other. And if you've been in any Infinity, you know what I'm talking about. And if you've watched any of my Infinity reviews, you'll know I've always complained about them. I much rather prefer this, the widescreen. I have heard some people say that it looks cheaper because it kind of juts out from the console here, that maybe it's too high, but it is right in your eye line and I don't mind it, I think it looks really good. The only thing that possibly makes it look cheap is the piano black that's surrounding it that uh, definitely can get some fingerprints on it, but that's uh, pretty standard across most vehicles. Along with this new widescreen, we do have a new infotainment system, and I will say that this does look pretty cheap, and I'm pretty sure it is lifted straight from something like the Nissan Sentra. Definitely would have liked a better UX design, something a little bit more luxurious for this flagship but overall i do like the wide screen over the dual stacked screen design and just because we have a big screen up here doesn't mean we're losing physical buttons we do still have physical volume knobs physical buttons here they're not capacitive they are actual buttons which is great ac and heat controls down here all nice we've got the heated and cooled seats no complaints there. Here we have a little cubby that can be opened up and this is a wireless phone charger. So you can throw your phone in there and begin to wirelessly charge it. This also does have Apple CarPlay, which can be hooked up through the USB type C or USB type A ports, or you can have it wirelessly playing Apple CarPlay. And the Apple CarPlay definitely makes the infotainment system look a little bit better. You still do have a split screen design, which I'm not a huge fan of, especially when you can't really change what's on this side. You also do have Android Auto to choose from, but not wireless Android Auto. And while we're looking at the screen, let's go ahead and put the car into reverse. And you can see we do have the full 360 uh, camera view here which is great for this big SUV to be able to get into parking spots. You can change the view by clicking the button there. Speaking of cameras, we do have the rear view camera on the rear view mirror. So you are able to see from the rear view camera here, or you can flip it down and see through the rear view mirror itself. You already saw the shifter here. It is a traditional gear shifter, no electronic shifter, no rotary dial for the shifts. Just a traditional shifter here. To the side of that is our terrain control here. And this allows you to keep it in auto into four high or four low. We have a tow mode here, 
a snow mode, and you can turn the traction control off here. Coming further back once more, we do have another control here for the navigation and your infotainment control. You do still have a touch screen, but this will help you navigate a few things uh, without having to reach up to the screen itself. And then finally, our armrest here is nice and padded. You can lift open and it is a nice deep console there. Moving along to the steering wheel, it is a thinner steering wheel, but it's kind of a, more of a luxurious touch over the thicker sporty touch. It is surrounded with a wood texture and then leather inside. Nice stitched leather on the center, audio controls on this side, and then all of your um, cruise control settings on this side. And behind the steering wheel, we have our gauge cluster with two analog tacks and our center screen that can be flipped through depending on what we're wanting to see here. So lots of great new additions, nice touches in the interior. I definitely like this over the previous year that we reviewed, but now it's time to get this thing out on the road, take it for a drive, talk about the whole experience of driving this vehicle. Then we'll pull back over, talk about the price competition, and we'll wrap up the video with some of my final thoughts. Let's continue going. So my first biggest and almost only complaint with the QX80 nowadays is still this seat. And it has a lot to do with this sensory, having the big plushy seat. It doesn't go down far enough for me. It doesn't go back far enough for me. I feel more cramped in this vehicle than I should. It's not super comfortable. It feels like you're sitting up on top of a pillow and not down into the seat like I would prefer. That is something <laughs> specific to me and I complain about it almost every time I drive not just the Infiniti QX80 but uh, I've had the same thing in the Platinum Reserve of some uh, Nissan vehicles it's just the way that they do their premium seats that just doesn't uh, jive well with me but I haven't heard that from a lot of other people I have heard it from some but not a lot of people so take that with a grain of salt and if you get past that which you probably should this thing drives super comfortably. That V8 power, plenty of get up and go. You are sacrificing some fuel economy if you're going with a V8, obviously, but uh, the trade-off for having some good power pushing these, pushing this big old vehicle. It's a trade-off I'll usually make. Of course, you are uh, stuck with premium only gas and filling this thing up right now <laughs> at this time it's expensive the new interior layout is done really well i can touch and push anything from here all the controls are laid out well steering wheel mounted controls are just fine having the rear view camera in the rear view mirror i like especially for these big old suvs the only downside in a three row suv is you can't see your kids in the back of course there are there are other options where you can get other mirrors or um, some minivans and some other suvs have an extra mirror that folds down as well but again it's just trade-offs on do you want the uh better visibility from the camera or do you want to be able to see what those kids are doing back there it's trade-offs yeah v8 power super nice during my full week i've been averaging 14.3 miles to the gallon again not great but uh it is what it is with a big three row suv with a v8 up front we do have the four wheel drive system it handles itself really well even with this big vehicle i haven't been able to take it off road during this review but 
I've seen these things off-road before. They do decently well. If you buy this vehicle and you're taking it off-road, it should do what you need it to do. Obviously, you're not rock climbing or uh, mountain climbing in this thing, but it has a nice four-wheel drive system with a with the four wheel low setting, so it's competent. You do have all the standard infinity safety features like the radar guided cruise control, uh, the 360 lane assist. And while it feels like it's not as advanced as something like a Nissan Rogue, it still works decently. We did take about an hour and a half road trip with the full family in this thing, and they're all very comfortable, rode really well. We had to carry back some boxes where we had to fold down one of the rear seats to uh, accommodate some extra room because again the cargo volume is decent but not great but if you're getting this for a large family suv it can handle it nice and luxurious it definitely wouldn't be my first choice but <laughs> they are popular i see them all over the place especially around here where i live and i'm not hating on anybody that buys one all right guys, and with that, let's go ahead and pull back over. Let's talk about the price competition, and then we'll jump back out and give you some of my final thoughts, and that'll wrap up the video. Let's do it. All right guys, so quickly on the price, the base Infiniti QX80 has an MSRP of just over $70,000. The Sensory starts out at just over $82,000. And here in this one, with a couple of options, you're looking at about $88,000. All that to say that it is pretty in line with what you might expect to pay for a premium three row SUV this large. If you're looking at the competition like the Yukon Denali, you're looking around that $80,000 mark as well. Cadillac Escalade, at least $100,000. Other premium brands are pushing the $100,000 mark also for their large three row SUVs. But let me go ahead and jump back out. We'll talk about some of my final thoughts and we'll finally wrap the video up. So after another week driving a new QX80, I can definitely say that every time I drive one, they improve a little bit. They've improved on the exterior design. They've definitely improved in the interior with the tech. Definitely happy they got rid of the dual screen. You have one wide screen. Although, like I said, I think it uh, could be a bit better, a bit nicer of a UX design. Still one of the biggest things that irks me about this is those seats. They don't go down far enough. They don't go back far enough. They're not that comfortable for me to drive, especially long distance. And that's definitely something to do with <laughs> me personally, maybe my height or whatever, because I don't hear that from a lot of other people, although I have heard it from some people. Either way, the QX80 has gotten better throughout the years. This is definitely the best version of the QX80 that I've driven. Doesn't mean it's not without its price tag, but it is the flagship Infinity, so you're gonna pay for that flagship Infinity. With that, I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the QX80, the changes they made inside. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. We do a different review every week, as well as some other fun content every once in a while. Also go check out txgarage.com for more written reviews, as well as event and news coverage from a lot of different great authors over there. And with that, guys, Thanks for watching.